How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. In honor of the unicorn pack dropping, I figured it's only fair if we go through the pack, all of the pets, we're going to rank them, talk about them, theorize some potential combos to go with, and please by all means drop some comments. Let's try to theorize together some strategies. Um, I love engaging with y'all. I love figuring out new ways to pair pets together. And I mean, the more we can come up with, the the more ideas I have for future videos. So, hey, by all means, let's do it. Without further ado, though, let's hop right in. So we're going to start out with tier one pets. So we're going to go in order and keep in mind that the tiers also have to reflect power level, right? Um, so that goes into the ranking as well. Not all tier fives are going to be four stars, so to so on. So we're going to start out with the Axe Handle Hound. This guy seems really good, actually, I think. Um, especially early on, you're gonna have a lot of copies of pets. Uh, at least I do, you know, running a several fish, you know, several ants, at least in the first three rounds or so. Um, and this is basically just kill one of them for free, right? So definitely good, especially if you get like two or three of them on your team, you could just win a round straight off the bat just because they have more than one. So for that reason, we're giving a little four star action to start off the the, the weekly with um not the weekly the the pack the is not even a weekly so used to weeklies now moving on to baku we're gonna have to go a little quickly because there are 84 pets i think including food so yeah we'll have to we'll have to expedite it so baku if the turn is even you can replace an ailment on a friend with two health when you sell it it, there's a lot here to uncover. Honestly, I don't think this is going to be very good. Um, how often are they going to have ailments? I mean, maybe, uh, maybe they will, but like in the shop, typically before this pack at least, that's not very common. It has to be an even turn, and you have to sell it just to get rid of the ailment and give them some health. It doesn't seem great. It seems super clunky. One star, or one trophy cup. Um, yeah, I don't think it'll be very good. Next one, Bar Barguest. Not sure how to pronounce that one. Um, making the last perkless enemy weak. Now, if this wasn't perkless, I would have said this is like four, maybe even five stars. Like this is huge, pairs really well with pets that target the back line. So when you're not only doing the unicorn pack, if there's like a crocodile and whatever, you know, just huge. Um, the fact that they're happy perkless, the enemy could just put whatever they want on their their units that you're trying to protect. And then it makes it, you know, you can't override any of it, so the weak is kind of whatever. So for that reason, one trophy. I don't think it'll be that good. Suchinoko, I think is how you say that. Um, start a battle, jump to the front space, and gain one experience. Now. It essentially is going to be, you know, get plus one, plus one, which isn't very good. It's like a one, or a one tier one, two, three, which doesn't seem fantastic. Um, there are some synergies where, you know, if a pet levels up, then something happens. If one of your friends does, it, it seems clunky. I don't think this being a tier one, you know, and then like you get to tier to level three, right? And now you're going to gain three experience when you're already maxed out. Like, how does that work? You know, there's just a lot of weird stuff going on. Maybe you just go to level four. I don't know, <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see. But I'm going to give it a two, two trophy rating for that guy. So far, not a whole lot of good tier ones. Um, and we're really not going to change that much here. Um, friend level up, you gain temporary stats till the end of battle. Again, it's like. It, how useful is it gonna be right like plus one plus two until the end of battle you can kind of pair it with our Suchinoko, but you know what's the what's the upside i don't know if i see it two trophies now we're moving on to alchemides um slightly better i would say um it's a targeted give the friend ahead mana and for those of you that don't know, mana essentially, some pets can use it as part of their ability. It's held on the pet itself, unlike trumpets, which is just a collective for your whole team. Um, and then the mana, when the pet faints, then whatever mana is left over, 
gets randomly dealt as damage to, you know, a random opposing pet. So that's just across the board, this new mana that we're talking about. So at the start of battle, you're giving a friend ahead mana. It seems all right. It's effectively, you know, deal one damage to a random enemy when it faints um, is the ability you're giving it, you know? Um, so not good on its own, but I think it pairs well and it's good enough that you can pair it into other abilities and you like to have it later on even. So we're going to give it three trophies better than the others. Not fantastic. Just kind of, it'll be okay to throw in. Now the warg, not great. <laughs> I think so he gains mana. Obviously you could pair it with our alchemides here, but he gains mana and deals one damage to a random enemy. Now it scales to dealing one damage to three random enemies, which seems horrible. I think that it's like a, a mosquito, right? But then you have to gain mana to activate it. So I, I don't know if I see it. There, the upside can be there, I think, because it can gain mana more than once, right? So it's better than a mosquito. But is the mosquito even good later? <laughs> like it's decent in the first few turns, sure. But by the time you're setting up enough pets to give this mana multiple times, I don't think you're really caring much about the deal one damage. So that's going to be a two trophy. Okay, bunny it. This guy is, this guy's kind of interesting. Okay, so at the start of battle, you gain health for each time you roll this turn up to three. So if in theory, right, like you don't want to roll too much in the first couple turns, but turns four and so on, you could reasonably roll three times, right? And if you do, then he'll get three health and it's a three, four, not that bad. And then if you get him leveled up, it scales a little bit, but Kind of just like a decent one to throw in because you're probably going to be rolling anyways especially when you get to some of the later pets because there's a lot of rolling synergy in this pack so it might be okay is like a mid game definitely not a late game pet though okay moving on so yeah he's gonna be a three three trophy what do we got here we got the sneaky egg this one's really really interesting um so you have a two four and at the start of battle, it faints and then becomes a 4-2, so it flips. Now, there there isn't a whole lot of faint synergy um, in this in this weekly, and notably, you can't buff the 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 egg that you're summoning. Like if you if you buff the sneaky egg, it kind of just goes away. Um, so I don't think it's going to be very good. I think it'll be throw it in as a 4-2, and maybe a little buff like faint synergy, but that's got to be a two trophy. Cuddle Toad. This I think is probably the best pet of tier one so far. Um, so what it does is you sell it and you get a witch toy. And now what does a witch toy do? You probably ask. So first off, we're giving a four and we'll go into why based on these these toys here. Okay. So we got the Witch Broom. You can give a random perkless enemy weak, similar to the ability we saw earlier. But this one actually, it, it's just a passive, right? So you can sell it, you have this here, and then you can throw something else in his place. It doesn't have to be on your team, right? Magic Wand, give a random friend experience at the start of battle. So it's not permanent, but during battle, maybe you can work with some level up synergies. I don't know. And then Crystal Ball, you give the frontmost friend some amount of mana. This one I think is probably gonna be the best, the most useful application, is just throw some extra mana on, get a good mana synergy pet, and just use it as like a little buy sell for some value. I don't think it'll be like game breaking, but I think four trophies is probably fair because you can use it later on, especially if you don't have a lot of, tro or a lot of toys to really work with. So moving on, the foods at the tier one level, we've got love potion. You give the, you give a targeted pet the love potion perk, which gives nearest friend ahead plus two health before the battle. It's fine, you know, it's whatever. Maybe it's help at full early, but probably, that's probably it, you know? Um, Water of Youth transforms a pet into another one from the same tier. This one's actually very interesting 
because if you can get some sort of you know something faints and generates multiple pets right um even if they're like one ones you know you can transform it into another pet kind of re-roll a little bit it's probably not going to be good. You'd rather just roll and try to find the pet naturally in the shop, but in a pinch, maybe. So that'll, that'll sum up our tier one pets. Now we're going to go into tier two. The first one we're going to have here is the ghost kitten. Now I think looking at this, the ghost kitten seems fantastic. If you're at all in any sort of snipes weekly situation, this is the go-to, right? Like you scaled up, you get it huge, you get to level three, it takes nine less damage from every ability. That just negates a crocodile straight off the bat, right? Like this is really good. And that's why that's gonna be our first five trophy. I think this is just a fantastic pet. You don't have to meet any weird obscure criteria. It's just really good. Going into the frost wolf, also pretty good actually. Um, so when you faint, you make the first, second, and third potentially enemies cold. Right now, what is cold? Take five damage one time when it gets hit. So I'm assuming when it gets hit. So you give it cold, it takes five damage and it's basically just like a little semi-targeted snipe. But I think the key here is that it'll override any any ailments or any buffs that the pet might have. So if it has melon, you know, you faint, say you trade one for one, the pet behind it is gonna lose its melon, right? So it, I think it's really good. I think it's gonna be a four trophy for sure. It'll be nice to just kind of throw on and you could even throw a, a pet behind that's just really low attack and then the cold helps finish it off. Going into Mothman, this guy, <laughs> I don't think he's going to be that good. Um, so he faints and deals two damage to one enemy with ailments. I think this is another one of those situations where are we really going to have ailments that consistently, right? So yes, it is almost targeted in a way, but you know, are we going to have three en different enemies with ailments? Can you just have one enemy with ailment and it hits all three times with level three? That might make it a little better, but realistically, that's got to be a two trophy. Drop Bear. Drop Bear seems pretty good. It's basically a doorhead ant, except instead of gaining health, he deals damage. I mean, dealing damage to the last enemy is really good. Crocodile is huge. I think this will just be a really solid, you know, early version of a crocodile. And maybe that's good enough to, to warrant throwing on a team. Give it three trophies. Jackalope. This one seems a little iffy. The reason I say that, so it triggers on friends jumping. Now, obviously we just saw the drop bear, he jumps, but how often are we gonna have friends jumping, right? I would reckon, so Jackalope doesn't jump, unless you give it a food, I think there's a food that lets him jump. But I'd reckon high end, you're probably getting three jumps in one game average probably one maybe two so how good is dealing two damage to a random enemy once or twice i don't think it's that good i think it's and the stats are horrible so i don't i don't see it really being useful i think it's got to be a two trophy next up we got lucky cat i really like lucky cat i think there's nothing flashy you know he just you level up you get some attack and some gold next turn Pretty good. Um, it's not immediate gold, so it's not like you can go crazy and just level up a bunch of times and over and over, you know, but it's pretty good. You know, I, I think it's good enough to be a solid three trophy. Now the Ogopogo, aside from being a very fun name to pronounce, I think it's pretty solid. It's a picture of the pug that gives the friend a head plus one experience except he doesn't have to be directly behind it, right? So it just, it defaults to the front most friend. And if you have a good synergy with it, it could be really good. I'll give it three trophies. I don't think it'll be that strong, but in the right build, maybe it helps out a little bit. Now for the Thunderbird. So start a battle, you're gonna give the front most friend some amount of mana. Now, 
on its own, this mana is just going to deal three damage to a random enemy, which is all right, you know, for a tier two, two, three, deal three damage to a random enemy. Like I would play that. And it also has mana synergies and it's not a small amount of mana either. You know, this is three mana level one. There, there could be some solid synergies going on here. And I think that's, that's good enough to make it a four tier or four trophy. All right, going into the gargoyle, we're gonna spend mana to re to give the nearest friend behind one health per mana spent. So it spends all of your mana, notably, and it gives some amount of health. I don't think it'll be very good. You know, getting three health, you would probably most of the time rather just deal three damage to an enemy, because that three health, if it's not on the right unit, might just do nothing, right? So for that reason, two trophy. Now for our last entry of the tier twos, we got a pretty good one. So on faint, you gain free rerolls next turn. If you compare this with like a mushroom and it's at level three, we're getting a lot of free rerolls and that's a lot of free level ups. And I think that alone warrants a four star here. And going into the food. So level two food or tier two food, um, so you can give the gingerbread man perk. It gains one experience before battle. Um, this this definitely isn't like end of turn where it sticks around. You know, it's start of battle, I think. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of level up experience or level up synergies. Maybe it's good. Maybe, maybe it'll work out in a pinch, but probably just going to feel like a 1-1 one -one for the most part. Fairy dust. Um, it lets the pet jump to the front space when it's empty. So you could give fairy dust to everyone in your team and then get those jump synergies and maybe that does something for you. But yeah, realistically, I don't see that being entirely useful. The only way it would be is when they have friend ahead perks, when like a friend ahead attacks or faints or something. And then you just keep having everybody as the friend ahead, right? Then I could see that being pretty good, but we'll see. We'll have to see about that one. Wall Chicken is interesting. It gives your pet ailments and plus three attack. So it seems like it could be good in a pinch and some pets actually pair well with overriding ailments. So maybe in the right build you would go Wall Chicken, but probably not on its own unless you just stack Wall Chicken and get a ton of attack. But that's typically just a waste of gold. All right, moving on to tier three. The first one we're gonna have on tier three is the skeleton dog. Now this guy seems pretty all right, I think. Um, when he faints, he gives a random friend permanent plus one plus one. Now if you can get some synergies, give him a mushroom, get a tiger behind him, something like that, like it could stack up. Um, and then notably level three, it's three other random friends. So it's not three, three on the same friend which could be good or bad depending on what you're going for, but I think it's solid stats and probably good to just have on the team to get some, some passive scaling. Three trophies. Mandrake. This guy's kind of weird. So I love the idea of this dazed, right? So the effect of dazed is it, whatever enemy, whatever pet that it hits, its ability doesn't go off. So it's a really interesting, like, I immediately picture putting on a skunk, right? Like, you know, you can get on a skunk and then the skunk won't destroy your highest, highest uh, statted pet, right? And the cool part about this is you can specify tier or lower pets. So if the, if the enemy is doing what I see a lot and get one skunk tier four and then just stack a bunch of high tier pets, you can target the skunk. Right? So like the one issue I see with this, the reason I'm not going to make it four or five note, little, little thing here. So the reason I'm not going to make it four or five is because the, the mandrake has to be higher stats than the, the pet that it's targeting. Right? Espe well, if it's a start of battle, that is. So if I want to hit the skunk and stop it from hitting us, the mandrake has to go before the skunk. 
So it has to have a higher attack because that's how Super Auto Pets determines the order of abilities. So it's kind of like a, you know, you don't really want to invest all that much in the Mandrake. It's, it'd be nice if it were just like a throw it in and leave it. But if it's, if you're trying to deactivate start a battle, it doesn't really work that well. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. We'll have to see. Three trophies. Now we got the fur bearing trout. Um, when it faints, it gives Rambutan perk to the nearest fret beh friend behind. Um, this is going to be a four, four trophy. And for those of you wondering, Rambutan, he gained three mana before attack. I think it's a great, great synergy. I think Rambutan is super strong. You know, you, you just stack up a, up a bunch of mana. Put this in front of a pet that synergizes well every time it gains mana. Do something right. And I think this could be a really solid, you know, you just throw it on as a tier one or a level one, I should say, um, two, two, and you know, you're not, you're not using it for the trout. You're using it for the Ramaton. So not bad. And you can pill it too. If you're not in this pack, cause this pack doesn't have pills, but if you're emerging packs, pill this, have a Ramaton on the pet. That sounds, sounds like a great option. So that's why it gets four trophies. Moving on. We got the mana hound. So this guy gives the nearest friend ahead one mana for each roll this turn at the start of battle. This seems if the rolling is as good as it seems like it will be, this could be a really solid ability, especially because there's no cap. So it's just however many times you roll. If you roll 500 times, you know, you get 500 mana. Um, so it could be really solid. Um, whether it will be, we'll have to kind of see how the rolling function works. Um, it's it's going to be a little tricky to tell right now, but it's definitely got potential. And, you know, you can get it to level three and you get a little bit more value. But yeah, we'll have to see. We'll give it a three, three trophy for now. Now we got the Cali Greyhound. I think is how you say that. I don't know what this thing is, but <laughs> it's honestly not great. When you faint, you spend whatever mana you have to remove one health per mana from the two most healthy enemies. So say you give it five mana, it faints, it takes five health from the two most healthy enemies. You know, it seems okay, but it is not fantastic. I think there are much better mana synergies and this just doesn't really seem like it It hits that niche well enough to make it war warranted on your team. So we're going to give it two trophies. Now this is a brain cramp. <laughs> I don't know why this ability has anything to do with brains aside from melon generally refers to heads. But yeah, so in an empty f front space is presented, it'll jump to the front and gain attack and melon. So it's kind of like the ox. Um, before it got nerfed, except it has to jump in front to gain the melon. Um, honestly, not bad. I think melon is really good. And especially if you're in a pack that doesn't have melon in like a weekly or something, this could be a really good niche, kind of give it a ton of attack and then send him out. He'll probably trade, like double trade into the enemy pets. Just good value. Give it a four tier or trophy. Minotaur. This guy seems insane. Like, <laughs> absolutely wild. So, you gain one attack and one health for each of the friend's levels when it attacks. So if you have a, you know, two level ones, this is a kangaroo, right? Straight off the bat, a 1-3 kangaroo is just strictly better than a kangaroo. Now, when you level them up, you know, the friend's level also factors into it. So if the friend is a tier two, and this is a tier two, right? So you're gonna get four, four every time it attacks. Like the the friend's jumping ahead thing is just gonna go insane with this guy. I think Minotaur is gonna be absolutely fantastic. Probably gonna need a nerf <laughs> in the future, but that's a five trophy right there. Wyvern, this guy seems really good. Um, whenever a friendly pet levels up, you gain an extra shop reward. So, I don't know if this works if you combine two level twos, if it'll still give you a shop reward then, because it's zero plus one. TBD, but 
I mean, typically that's where your biggest power spike is, is from these level ups. And this is just giving you more opportunities to find a really good power spike pet. So definitely four star here. Ouroboros is, it seems insane. So if you think about it, so every time you roll, you give unfrozen shop pets health until the end of battle for each roll this turn. Now, so it sounds like you roll and it gets one health, you roll again, it gets one health and so on. I'm pretty sure if I'm reading this right, you roll, you get one health, you roll again, they get two, because you rolled twice, roll again, they get three, so then three rolls gives them six health at level one. And you can see how insane this would get as you go on to levels two and three, especially if you're getting these super high roll counts, you could very reasonably get to a 50-50 uh, or not a 50-50, but like a some attack 50 health pet fairly quickly. And I think in a pinch, that would be really solid just to get through a turn that you're not feeling too good about, right? So that's got to be four tier. Griffin. Okay, so here's my thing with Griffin. So you sell the Griffin and it gives you a toy, right? Notably a toy um that the treasure map that leads to another toy treasure chest so you buy sell the griffin you can't play any other like toy pets until you wait four turns for this treasure chest to pop okay now that alone might not be like the worst thing ever there isn't a whole lot of toy synergy in this pack but then say you want to get this to level three right you're, you're either going to have to wait for the previous one four turns for it to pop, or you just keep overriding it and you never actually get anything out of it until it gets to level three. It seems super clunky. I don't think this is going to be good at all. I think this is a one trophy. And going into what these two abilities do. So treasure map does absolutely nothing. You know, you wait two turns, and then it summons a chest. That does nothing. <laughs> you wait two turns and then it'll stock a free pet a level 3 pet, notably, from tier 2, 4, or 6. So it's like, the high end, you know, you get a level 3 tier 6 seems great. How likely are you to get a level 3 griffin before turn 500? Probably not that likely. I don't think it'll be very good. Alright, going into the foods. Just right porridge, give one pet plus 3 to their lowest stat. Honestly, it seems really good. I love that it's, you know, it's helping balance the stats. You don't see that very often. You either pick health or attack. So I really like the, the way that this food works. The Easter egg. You give one pet the Easter egg perk. Um, now this was revealed in, or teased, I guess, in Scooty's video. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. But basically you get a 2-1 bunny um, where you know, it attacks for double damage. It seems like it might be okay, but how how are you going to buff the bunny that gets spawned, right? Um, maybe you can give something an Easter egg and then kill it, and then you have a bunny that you can scale. Maybe that's the way to do it. I don't know. We'll have to see, but it seems like it might be okay. Now the health potion, you gain three health for each level before battle. Honestly, it seems terrible. I think I would much rather just give three to the lowest stat if I had to choose between health potion and forage. But, you know, if it's scaling, maybe. Um, you know, if the health stays, if it's like an end of turn, that'd be really good, but I don't think it is. So, not too hopeful for that one. All right, tier four coming right up. First pet up is the Kraken. So the Kraken, I can't tell if it's gonna be absolutely broken or just pretty good. What I do know is it only works for certain builds. You're not gonna put it on a huge team-wide scaling build because obviously you're gonna destroy your own team. But if you get some really good summon synergy and you put a Kraken up there, I mean, this could just be fantastic. If you take 60% off of a scaling team's health, you know, it, it's over. <laughs> That's their whole livelihood you're getting rid of. So I think Kraken, I, I don't want to do five trophies, but I think easily four trophies could be reasonable. Next up, we got Visitor. 
This guy's kind of weird. Um, so he makes all pets within one, two, or three spaces exposed. It's kind of like the bear um, putting honey on the friend ahead, or the friend behind and the enemy ahead um, when it faints, but this is exposed, so they take double damage. It's it, it seems really clunky. I can't figure out a way that this would actually pair well with another pet. Because ideally you'd want to do a disposable pet behind it on your team. It's like a summon build. But it deals double damage. And if you're only doubling like a 3 damage or a 3 attack pet. Is it actually doing much for you? I don't think so. It can override um, different uh, like melons and stuff. So there's that. But I don't think it's going to be huge. I think it's a two trophy. And there, that's what Expose does. Take double damage twice. Next up, we got Vampire Bat. I really like Vampire Bat. I think if you have two Vampire Bats, that'd be perfect. And then you just get guys that throw ailments at the enemies. And I think this guy could just take over, right? I think it, it's going to potentially require a lot of upkeep. And, you know, you have to build up your team to support it. So it might be too slow for that reason. I'm only going to give it three trophies, but I could definitely see the high end and we definitely are going to have to check it out. Next, we got Tiger Bug. This is essentially a door head ant, but instead of gaining health, then he attacks the, the first two enemies. Um, you know, you get a lot of these jump to the front abilities. It seems all right. I don't think it's crazy broken. I don't think it's bad either. I think it's just kind of whatever. Three trophies. Catsle Worm does not seem very good. Um, friend ahead faints, you get deal two damage for each of its levels to a random enemy. At best, I feel like you'll trigger maybe three times um, with a couple tier twos thrown in there. It's 10 damage, kind of split around. I don't think it'll be that good. It could, you know, you get to level three, it starts dealing more. If, if we can get the friends jump ahead thing working well enough, um, this could actually be really strong, but I don't know if I see it as the pivotal unit. I'm gonna have to go two trophies on this. I don't see the vision. Now Cyclops, <laughs> I don't think is gonna be very good. So it only triggers on a friend leveling up. So already there, not very common. And it gives itself two, or no, it gives the friend two mana in one experience. So the friend already leveled up. It doesn't need one more experience, right? Um, maybe it'll level up again. You know, if it's a level one and you get this guy to level three, then maybe it'll get to level three as well. It seems clunky. Um, and then I, I don't know if mana works in the shop. You know, if this if this sticks around in the shop, this could be fantastic. But I'm assuming it doesn't. I don't know how that would work. If it does, I take it back, but right now we're going to have to go one trophy. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if it works in the shop. We got a Chimera next. Whenever it faints, it summons one, two, or three pets with one, two for every mana that it spends. So if you can get the Chimera to like 20 or even 25 mana in the level three, it faints and summons three 2550 pets. <laughs> like, just think about that. That is absolutely insane and is honestly not that crazy. Like it's not super uncommon to get that much mana on him. It might be hard to get him in the back with that much mana, but it's going to be insane, I think. I, this this guy, I'll give him three for now, but if you can support him well enough, easily four or five. I'll just put it out there. Talking about supporting him, <laughs> we have The Rock. This guy seems absolutely insane. Um, so start a battle, you give the friend ahead, a random friend ahead, not immediately ahead necessarily, plus two mana, and it triggers three, six, or nine times. So first off, you have the synergy with pets who have, a, have an active ability every time they gain mana. This triggers that ability three, six, or nine times. Already amazing. The second one, you know, level one, you get six mana. Level three, you get 18 mana, <laughs> right? That's insane. We just saw how good 20-ish mana can do on a pet. So if you can get this all targeted on a single pet or even two pets, you're, you're going off to the races. I think this is a pivotal pet, five trophies. It is going to define the mana build. 
Next we got Worm of Sand. This is definitely on the roll build side of things. I don't... I think it'll be really good, just for the record. Um, the reason being, rolling six times seems like a lot, but there's a lot of synergies to make rolling free, or even roll at the start of your turn for free. So we'll get into a few of those later, but if you can get it so that you roll six times, just basically by default every round, you're scaling 1-1 one, one for two of your highest tier friends, right? Targeted scaling. It just seems like it could really pan out well. And you get this, you know, what if you get like four of these these pets here and then you get two high tier pets and they just hyperscale to 50-50? It seems like it could be really solid. We'll have to see if it actually pans out, but I'll, I'll give it a, a four, four trophies. I'll bite. Next up, we got Abomination. Basically, we're going to end turn and swallow and copy the leftmost start of battle shop pet until the end of battle. Now, as you level up, you swallow more and more pets. Now, I'm assuming it's not gaining the stats from those pets. It's just the ability. But if it's gaining stats, this is fantastic. But if it's just gaining the ability, I think it's going to be way too clunky. Uh, to get a level 3 and get 3 start of battle pets on the leftmost side, frozen. You know, you're, you're already taking up so much of your your pet rolling real estate, right? By freezing pets on the left. And yeah, I just don't think... I don't see it. I think it's going to be way too clunky. It's not going to make any sense. The payoff is not there. It's got to be a 1 trophy. Next up, we got some foods. First food, we got magic beans. Um, <laughs> so magic beans, they gain golden egg next turn. Um, so you give them beans next turn, it'll turn into golden egg, I'm assuming, um, which deals five damage before attacking once, and you can also sell a pet for three gold. Kind of a weird, you know, you have two benefits from it. You could just put magic beans on every pet, and then they just kind of have the snipe ability before they attack, which could be good. There may be better held foods in this case. I'm not sure. I'm not totally sold. Next up, we got Eat Me Cake. Remove two health from one pet and then give it five attack. This seems really good. It's like it's just like a better version or a stronger version, I guess, of the shrimp, fried shrimp. It seems really good for those health-focused weeklies. Um, there's a ton of them. It's so much easier to get health than attack. So this could be a really solid choice if you just have way too much health right drink me liquid is the alternative remove two attack and get five health i think that's horrible i think it's so much easier to get health than attack there's no reason to remove that much attack even if you're getting health because the payoff isn't there now we're up to tier five. First pet of the day we have the red dragon so the start of battle it makes the last enemy crisp now crisp makes the pet take six damage um it's it's okay i think the key here is it can override held foods it deals a little damage but is it that important i don't think so i think it's more targeting the last enemy that's really big so level one even level two i think is really valuable especially if you're t if you can get some back end snipes is it going to make the difference i don't know it pairs well with the crocodile if you get in a weekly or something Gotta give it three trophies. And then here, so yeah, take six damage after any attack, but only once, so it's a single use sort of thing. Next up we got Unicorn. If a friendly if a friendly pet gains ailment, you replace it with a permanent 2-2. So picture Whale Shark, but on a sep on like a friendly pet, and it can only work a set number of times per turn. Now I would actually argue this is significantly stronger than Whale Shark. Not because it's on a different pet, necessarily, but also because it only works a set number of times. So you can still give, once it gets to 50-50 and you don't need more stats, you can still give it a held food. So it's, it actually works out pretty well, or just sell the unicorn. Um, so I think it's it's really versatile. I'm, I gotta give it four. I think we can definitely make this useful. I think Whale Shark with the right setup is really strong. Level and Frogman. I don't know the reference. The guy looks really funky. Um, but whenever a friend jumps, you give it permanent stats. It's pretty good, actually. 1-2 in stats every time it jumps, even in battle. 
that's just fantastic. I think it's so late. I don't know if it's too late. You know, you can't get it really early enough to scale up over time, but it's it's got potential. I'm going to give it three trophies. Next up, we got Salmon of Knowledge. Start a battle, you give two frontmost friends and enemies experience, okay? The fact that it gives enemies experience as well, I'm not sure how to how to picture this, right? Like, you, you can set up level ups um, synergy on your team and get a little bit more out of it, but it also buffs potentially some really strong pets leading your enemy team. So I don't think this is good at all. I think there are much better alternatives here. So we gotta go with two trophies. Okay, next up, Jersey Devil. <laughs> we give plus one, plus one to a friendly summoned pet for every level three pet sold this game. So a lot going on here. You get level three, keep in mind, not tier three, level three. So you have to level up a pet to the third level tier and then sell it. For everyone you've done of that, you get plus one, plus one. So this makes me think that there's a ton of level up synergy across the board and you're just gonna get level threes out the wazoo. If that's actually the case, I think it could be really good. Honestly though, I think this is gonna be super clunky. You know, it's you gotta do it with a summon build too. I don't I don't see this working nearly as well as you would hope. This is gonna be, have to be a one trophy for me. Next we got the Pixie, if that's how you say that. Um, when you faint, you spend six mana to gain a certain amount of gold next turn. So I don't think this is very good. Um, and you're fainting, you don't get the perks of the mana because you have to spend it. And then you just get some gold next turn. I mean, I would rather just get, you know, some swans or, or something, you know, and just get consistent gold without hurting your in battle abilities. So yeah, I'm gonna have to give it two. Maybe it's good just on its own if you're not a mana build, but not feeling it. Next up we got Katsune. Friendly pet feigns, you transfer all friendly mana, plus two, four or six, to the nearest friend ahead. This is huge. Cause we're talking, you know, you get a ton of mana built up across your team. Someone faints and then all of that mana, presumably on your, on your team, not just from Kitsune, would get transferred to the friend ahead. Let's keep in mind, we have that guy that that summons three, up to three pets with these crazy high stats if you get a lot of mana. This is a natural combination for him. So I can see the mana build going hard here. We'll go three. It's not gonna be on its own absurd, but I think it'll be pretty solid. Next up we got Nessie. When it faints, you summon another Nessie with two attack and two health for each roll this turn, up to 10. So if you can get roll builds going like it seems you, like you will, this seems great. You know, level three, you faint, you're pretty much gonna get a 50-50, so that's solid. And you can even pill it and just have like, you know, an automatic 50-50. Um, so I don't know how that works if you can pill it after you roll a bunch of times to keep the 50 50 i we'll see i think it would um in which case honestly i think it's really solid i give it four trophies and then here's the nessie that it creates it's it's a little boat with a nessie head on it which is a nice little nod there to the folklore next up we got bad dog this is if anyone ever played hearthstone this is like your nazar okay so you're just gonna get a toy here, it's gonna do a bunch of random everything, and it's it's not supposed to be super strong, it's just supposed to be fun, kinda spread chaos, right? So I think, realistically, it's a two trophy, but I think it'll be a lot of fun to try out. And then here are the two, two toys that you can get. So Pandora's Box gives all pets random perks and ailments. It's across the board the same regardless of your level. And then the Evil Book, is basically a giant hedgehog <laughs> so you create this huge hedgehog that deals massive damage to everything naturally this would pair very well with the kraken which destroys a lot of the enemy's health so maybe there's some actual good synergies there but you know we'll see we'll see how that goes next up we got werewolf 
Werewolf doesn't seem great. If your turn number is even at the start of battle, gain 100%, 200-300% to attack and health. So you get a super strong unit every other turn, which can be good in a pinch, but it's, you're, you're gonna want consistency, right? Like, you're not gonna get 10 wins by winning every other turn, right? Like, so it's, I don't think it's gonna be great. I gotta give it two trophies here. It'll have a niche use case, but nothing beyond that. Okay, mana potion. So give one pet plus six mana. So I don't know if this is a held food and then like they have six mana at the start of the turn or if you can like slowly stack up mana in the shop, maybe? TBD on that one. Um, if you can just stack it up over time, this seems actually kind of broken. Uh, you put it on that guy that summons those three giant dudes and you're just free sailing, right? So. We'll see. If that's how it works, I think mana is too strong. <laughs> you gotta calm down this mana potion. Um, also, we got Yggdrasil fruit. Um, you give one pet the fruit perk, and it summons two 3-3 three, three Nordic goats after fainting. It's pretty solid. Um, definitely just kind of like a summon perk, I guess. Um, I don't think there's going to be a huge use case. It's not going to make summon build better, because... It's just going to summon more stuff. Usually summon builds aren't worried about summoning more. It's the effects adding on to the summons that are already on the build. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it pans out. And now we're getting into tier 6. This one's going to be interesting. <laughs> just, just to let you know. Prepare yourselves. So starting out here, we got the Manticore. All enemy ailments are 2, 3, or 4 times worse. I mean, you can already see this going insane just from the dealing double damage guy um it's, it's just gonna be wild i think you deal double damage but four times worse so i mean eight times damage that just seems <laughs> absurd <laughs> so you know you deal eight damage and it's a ko right so this guy could definitely go insane i don't know i don't see this being anything less than a build defining pet right so we'll give it four because it's definitely not going to destroy on its own but it's a huge starter for any sort of ailment build or a huge pivot i guess i should say so it definitely could be five don't get me wrong next up we got phoenix this one i'm honestly not huge on um you make just a whole bunch of random pets crisp <laughs> so including your own right and then you summon a phoenix so the effect is cool i get it's like in line with the phoenix ability and stuff practically i don't see it really taking over being a tier six so i gotta go with the two tier next we got the hardest word ever invented um quetzalcoatl uh, <laughs> at the end of your turn you gain or you give one random tier three or lower friend to experience this one is crazy so picture all of these pets that are synergizing with these level ups and these experience buffs and everything. Well, this is your motor. This is your engine firing all of these pets, keep them going. And if you think back to the Jersey Devil, if you get a bunch of tier threes and this is a level three, this is effectively getting a level three to, or a tier three to level three every turn, right? So. I mean, huge potential upside there. Again, I don't think it's going to be good enough. I don't think Jersey Devil is going to scale quick enough or be relevant enough, but there's a lot of combos here that you can kind of see piecing together as we get into these pivotal tier sixes. So it's got to be a four star. Next up, we got Team Spirit. So when a friend levels up, you give all of your friends plus one, plus two, and so on for the level ups. It seems pretty good. I mean, when you consider that alongside the Quetzalcoatl, you know, that's potentially, if it's level 3, that's two level ups per turn. If you give all of your friends 6, 12 in stats every turn, if both these are level 3, like, that scales absurdly quickly. And that's just passive scaling at the end of the turn. So, the upside, the high end is huge. It's, it's there. It's potentially going to take over. 
I think those two together could be a five tier. Each of them alone, I'll say four. Next up, we got Sleep Near. Not sure the lore behind this one, but start a battle, you give the frontmost friend one mana for every two attack this has. So if you can get if you can get it to work out where you can throw this on the right type of unit, it seems like it could be pretty solid and you pair it with the right kind of ability. I think it's it's absolutely pivotal as far as mana builds go. It's being completely targeted on the frontmost pet and it can go one, two, or three, right? So if you get a level three, yeah, this is a 50 attack or even 25 attack, right? You're going to give it a decent amount of mana and this is just going to be build defining I think so that's got to be a five tier for me okay so we got sea serpent so whenever it faints you spend mana to deal two damage per mana to the most healthy enemy this guy let's just picture this okay so you have sea serpent along with the sleep near okay sea serpent gets 50 or even 25 mana, okay. It deals 50 damage to the three most healthy enemies on faint. Just just picture this for a second. 25 mana, you eliminate three pets on their team for one. Guaranteed. That is absurd. <laughs> this is way too strong. It's gotta get nerfed, absolutely. This is a five, five trophy for sure. Next up, we got Yeti. This guy is very cool. I love this ability. End of turn, you roll three, six, or nine times and freeze duplicate pets, okay? So let's think Yeti at the end of the turn, you roll nine times. That activates so many of your roll synergies without having to pay for any of it, right? And then it freezes all your duplicate pets. So at the start of the next shop, you're just gonna have a bunch of free duplicates to tack onto your, not free, but a bunch of duplicates to tack onto your other guys easy levels i think this is a really cool idea give it four four trophies next up we got cerberus whenever there's an empty front space summon a an eight eight fire pup in the front works one two or three times that part is the key if you get a level three cerberus you summon a pup in front three times per turn so you get an, you get a pet right that works well with the unit in front so you put him in the second slot the unit in front dies you summon this he dies again summon this uh, dies again summon this and then you start jumping friends in front dude it's gonna pop off so quickly you're gonna have like six seven triggers it's gonna be insane and just imagine you get two cerberus this is gonna be absolutely wild instant inclusion for any summon build here tier five for sure and next up, we got the Hydra. So this guy, you faint and you summon a Hydra head for every 10 attack this has. So, you know, you have a 50-50. You're going to summon 5 15-15 Hydra heads at level 3. It's pretty good. I don't know if, it, if I see it as the build-defining pet. I think it's solid, but considering all the other ones we've seen at tier 6, it's a little bit underwhelming. I'll keep it at four, but I don't think it's going to be the high end build defining pet that we see it in a lot of these tier sixes. And last up to close out everything, we have the behemoth. His stat caps are instead of 50, 50, they're a hundred hundred, which is absurd to me. <laughs> like skunk city. If you can get a skunk here, right? Like, and at the end of the turn, he gets 2-2 every turn. So, yeah, this guy is going to be insane. I think this is an auto-include everywhere you can, unless you're going, like, Kraken or something. I gave it 4. I could definitely see an argument for 5. This guy seems like he's going to take over. And the just the value being over 50 health, you're almost guaranteeing that you trade for 2 or 3 at a time. So... This guy's going to be good. Watch out for the behemoth. And last but not least, you got to go over the foods for tier six. We got the peach of immortality. You give a pet one, one for each peach of immortality bought this game. So that's an interesting, you kind of scale up food builds, right? Eventually after three or four, 
you're getting above chicken leg status pretty quick, right? So I could definitely see the appeal here. I think it'll be fantastic. Um, only if you're going a food build though. So you got a really full send on it. Cornucopia, you choose a free tier six food to stock from all packs. It seems fine, you know? You pick a good one, you know, you have your pick as to which food you want, but you do have to commit to buying the cornucopia. So it, it seems all right, I don't know. Bonpeto, if that's how you say that, you transform one pet into another one from a higher tier. Now this one's interesting, because you can go from a tier five to a six, but it's not gonna keep whatever stats it had. I'm assuming if you use it on tier six, it'll just roll into another tier six. I don't know, it could be good, but I don't see this being the most useful ever. Well y'all, that'll do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. It was a long one, so if you stuck around this long, I really appreciate it. Let me know what kind of builds you think are gonna be fun, what kind of pets you're looking forward to playing. This is gonna be a really cool pack, I can tell already. There's a lot of content to be had in the unicorn pack. So thank you again for watching. Please drop a like, comment, or sub if you enjoyed. I certainly appreciate it, and I certainly love talking with you all about this stuff. But for now, I will see you all on the next episode, and I hope you have a good one.